Springtime is one of my favorite times of year just about anywhere, especially here in the south of France. I'm standing in a field surrounded by beautiful cherry trees that are in full bloom, and in a couple months they'll be bearing tons of fruit, a lot of which will go bad. Now a lot of you, if you're anything like me, throw out a lot of fruit every year. But making jam is one of the easiest things you can do, and it's a lot of fun. It only takes an hour at most, and it's a good way to put that fruit to use. Otherwise, it just ends up in the compost pile. In a couple of minutes, I'll show you how to make strawberry jam. We've already found some great strawberries this season, and we're going to put them to good use. So I bought these strawberries the other day at the market, but they've gone a little bit overripe. So what I'm going to do, in the first step in making them into jam, is to rinse them off. So we're going to go over to the sink. So just give them a good rinse under cold water. Get all the bugs out. So now taking a sharp knife, you're just going to cut the tops off of the strawberries. You can cut them in half or into thirds, and then Put them in a saucepan. So I finished chopping the strawberries. You can see they're all diced up nicely in the saucepan. And I still have the strawberry tops, which you should put in your compost pile. If you don't have a compost pile and you don't live in the city, you live in a place where you can have a garden, or even if you have a lawn, you should definitely start a compost pile. It's, it's great for your yard. It's good for the environment. Something to think about. Now we're going to add a lemon. Maybe not the whole lemon, it depends on how many strawberries you have, but definitely add a good amount. It'll bring out the nice, sweet, tart flavor of the strawberries. So just take a lemon, you're just gonna squeeze it in there. Get all the juice out, watch for the seeds. So now we're gonna add some sugar. Again, not, not too much sugar either. You just wanna do it to where it just kind of coats them because you can add more sugar later. So now we're just gonna grab the spoon. I'm still limping. Two more weeks of these crutches and I can walk normally again. So I'm gonna let this mixture sit for about 15 minutes covered over medium heat. This will let the fruit break down properly and you're, you're gonna wanna watch this closely for 15 minutes to make sure that it doesn't bubble over. You'll lose some of your juices and that won't be good for your jam. So it's been about 15 minutes and you're gonna have a nice liquidy mixture with some chunks of strawberries. You can mix this up more if you want. I like my kind of chunky, so I'm gonna leave it. And this mixture is gonna to have to sit for a good hour or more. You can actually leave it overnight in the fridge, but I'm just gonna let this set for an hour. So while we're waiting for this to cool down, let's head out to the garden. La Louvre was started in 1986 by a woman named Nicole de Vassian. Despite being well into her 60s, Nicole was the one who had the vision to transform the garden into what it is today. Local legend has it that this was the site upon which the last wolf was killed in the region in the 18th century, giving the garden its name, La Louvre, which translates into she-wolf. I often find that a good garden design makes use of native plants, and Nicole has implemented this idea throughout the garden. Lavender, sage, rosemary, and thyme are found throughout the region and are equally abundant in the garden. However, in this garden, the plants are transformed by continuous clipping, which was inspired by Nicole's fascination with Japanese traditional gardens. This continuous clipping not only strengthens the plants, but gives them new shape, forms them into intricate tapestries of texture and color, and creates a dialogue in between the garden and the landscape beyond. At this time of year, there are many wildflowers, iris, blooming rosemaries, and thyme, and then in summer there are hollyhocks that tower over me, cardoons with beautiful purple flowers, and the lavender carpets the lower terrace in shades of purple, silver, and green. While it's been ten years since Nicole's passing, as with all great works of art, her spirit lives on here at the Louvre. Now let's head back inside and continue work on our jam. So this has been sitting a little over an hour. It's lost all of its juices into the pot, as you can see. And what we're going to do now is we're going to put this down back under the stove until it's a good jam consistency a good 15, 20 minutes, even longer. You can leave it on as long as you'd like, you can make it as thick as you'd like, but keep an eye on it because it will burn if you're not careful. 
So as this boils down, you can add a little bit more sugar or lemon juice as needed and taste it periodically until it's to your liking. One thing you can do to thicken the jam is to add pectin, which can be bought at any grocery store. You can add a teaspoon of two or two to the, to the jam. But if you don't have that on hand, as I don't today, an easy thing to do is to take a store-bought jam like this, try to use a flavor, you probably just, you can use anything on hand, it's not gonna be that much, but try to use something similar, a berry if you're doing a berry, berry jam, um, or if you're doing a marmalade, something citrus. But um, just take like a teaspoonful of the jam, Store-bought jams are filled with, with God knows what, but, but they're definitely filled with pectin. So just, just put a couple teaspoons of the jam right into your jam to be and uh, stir that in. And uh, I'm just going to continue adding a little bit more sugar to sweeten this up. And uh, it's going to continue cooking. So in keeping with the theme of using old foods before they need to be thrown out, I'm cutting up some stale bread and I'm going to make it a French toast. And with that, I'm gonna use the strawberry jam tomorrow morning. It's gonna be really good, I can't wait. So I've let this boil again for another 15, 20 minutes, and it's still a bit runny, which is normal. You won't really know how thick it is until it cools down completely. So what I'm gonna do this time is I'm gonna put it back in the fridge, covered, and let it sit overnight, and I'm gonna try it again in the morning. And if it's too thin, I'll put it back on the stove. Mm. This is delicious. I've been letting this sit overnight, and it's still a little thin, but it's going to be really good on French toast. Just about anything it'll be good on it. But, so I'm going to let this boil down a little bit more, but um, I'm still going to use it for breakfast. It's going to be so delicious. This is going to be so good. 